We've never had the opportunity to be able to measure the, the, the bite pressure of any of our big cats, so it will be very interesting to find out what it will be. Whatever method we use, it's going to have to be extremely strong, without a doubt. The big question is, how do you harness the biting power of a big cat? One way is to be attacked by a lion and find out for yourself. The other, more preferable option, is to join forces with a team of experts in the world of pressure gauges. In charge of the project is engineer Len Baker. Our pressure gauges are normally used in industry. This one's quite unusual. We haven't had many experience of animals having to bite our gauges. So this is very new to us because these aren't control conditions. They might be biting and snatching. They might be doing all sorts of things. So we could get anything from really good results to biting straight through our gauge and it not working at all. So it's, it's really quite exciting. Len and his team have designed a brand new and unique piece of kit, the Big Cat Bitometer. The principle we're working on is we're going to have a sealed piece of tube and then on the end of that tube we're going to have a pressure gauge. So because it's all completely sealed, when you squeeze the tube, it will generate pressure. But what we don't know is how much pressure we're going to generate, how big the tube needs to be. We have no experience of this and it's really quite exciting. Without a lion or tiger on hand in the workshop, Len and his team have been road testing their pressure gauges in a vice to simulate the closing jaws of a big cat. So this is what we've come up with. This tube has steel on the inside of it, so hopefully they won't bite through it, with rubber on the outside to protect the lion. However, the vice doesn't have the big cat's razor-sharp teeth that could potentially pierce the tubing. If this happens, the cat would get a mouthful of glycerin, a sweet syrupy liquid. Not at all dangerous for the animal, just not to their taste. It's the day of our big cat bitometer test. And engineers Colin Long and Len Baker arrive at the park to meet Bob and Brian. They've brought with them the pressure gauges they've built exclusively for this experiment. This is the kit we've got. And how it's going to work is this is a hollow tube, yeah. reinforced, full of liquid. When they bite on it, it'll generate a hydraulic pressure, right. which will come through this tube and be displayed on the bitometer gauge here. The black one will give us the pressure, and the red one will stay at the maximum reading. Yeah. So we don't have to watch the gauge every second. Right. Now, we don't know how strong their bite's going to be, so we've made two. This is the nylon reinforced one, this is the steel one. Now, they could bite straight through the nylon, but the steel's very, very strong, and they might not get a reading on it. You can actually see that one move. <laughs> that is a lot tougher, yeah. isn't it? Which way do you think we should go? What if we go with that one, with the lions, and if they do break it, then obviously we can uh, have a change over in a safe area. Yeah and use that one, and if they don't get a reading, then... <laughs> yeah. Just to go back to the drawing board. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For the experiment, the bitometer will be attached to the back of a feed wagon, because the cats associate it with meal times and always follow it. Bob and Brian are therefore hoping they'll get close enough to grab hold of it, out of curiosity, if nothing else. So this is what we thought we'd um, put it off. The mouth like that. You think they'll go for that? I think they will. Time for the gauge team to go to work. So that's it. What do you think? It's on really rigidly. Um, well, I think we just have to give it a go, haven't we? See if they, it's lion or tiger proof. Yes. <laughs> I think that's going to stay there, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Whether the tube survives or not, we don't know. Yeah. With the bitometer firmly fixed in place, it's time to head into the park. First up are the young lions of Nookie's Pride. They're really interested in a fee wagon, they don't know. They obviously smell all the meat. Once we stop, I think they will sort of take an interest in it. Because we've got a lot of youngsters, as you can see in here, and they're, they're going to be quite inquisitive. 
Come on in. You don't seem too keen at the moment. Right. Same rubber, but we want the rubber around here, please. In anticipation of being fed, the cats love to sharpen their teeth on the feed wagon. But frustratingly, so far, there are no takers for the bitometer. Come on, what's this? It seems this morning the youngsters are only interested in breakfast. So, time to move on to the next section, the fully grown, mature lions of Charlie's pride. But before heading in, for a little added incentive, Bob smears the bitometer in meat juices. Hopefully, I hope how Charlie and his um, ladies bite that. Keep our fingers crossed. Weighing in at over 200 kilos, Charlie is by far and away the biggest big cat at the park. It was he who helped himself to one of our tyres last year and recorded the biggest reading on our pilometer experiment. So now we're up to about two and a half, nearly three kilos. You can feel the truck moving. So Bob is confident he'll be the star once again. And straight away, the bitometer's generating a lot of interest. Oh yeah, what's that? We've got someone sniffing it. You gonna bite it? Yeah. Oh, not much of a bite there. Good girl, go on, bite it. No, you gotta bite it, not play with it. Come on. Grab over it. Not the tyres. Bye. Charlie is here there. Oh, he's gonna come over. He'll have a look. But it was Charlie, the Lion King, who put the bitometer really to the test. What's that, a hundred? That's a hundred pounds. No, bite it. Go on, mate. I think he's punctured it. Has he already? Yeah, oh, punctured it. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> he didn't like the taste of it. <laughs> <laughs> like the taste it's sweet of for you, mate. Charlie now has his mouth full of thick, sugary glycerin. Totally harmless, but seemingly not to his liking. Just so over over a hundred. Yeah. That's pounds every square inch. He's got such a big jaw. Yeah. That's still a pound on every single inch he's biting. There's a hundred pounds pushing down. 100 pounds per square inch is more like a human bite. Scientists estimate that a lion's bite should be around 700 pounds. So those may be the figures we should be trying to get, but our problem is actually getting a reading. Is there a material that can withstand not only the force of the bite, but the sharpness of the teeth? As you see, like straight yeah, through. straight through. Cut it straight through, and it's really thick. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think because of the fact that Charlie punched it, that, really that could have been on its way up, that just yeah. as far as it got, as soon as he got punched it, it'll stop going up. Yeah. So it could have been double that, we just don't know. Well, we'll get the other through. one on, get the strong one on. Yep, get the big boy out there. We're going to change this quickly, put a new one on and see what the Tigers can do. We've got a reading and let's see if um, some Darwin can beat that, beat Charlie. We'll be back with the new, tougher bitometer later in the programme, as the experiment continues in the Tiger enclosure.